what we can do is look at where we want to put the orchards, which I think could be somewhere over here potentially. Uh, so we've got that there as a resource storage, but the farming comes along here like this. It makes sense to keep it close to the river. Let's do that. So let's go to buildings, farming, and orchard. Now, because I've not done this before, I really don't know how much space we, we technically need, how big we should be making these. But let's just have a little bit of a, a play around with it. And I'm thinking, do we want to leave some space for some fencing? So maybe put it there. And let's see, can we get two if we go this way? Yeah, okay. So we'll have it two that way. Oh, but then it's going into the path if we come down here. Okay, maybe we leave this spot for something else and we start the orchard over here instead. So let's try that again. Uh, always a lot of trial and error with, with my building, uh, especially because I click the wrong button quite a lot. <laughs> okay, this time, so it goes off like that. So we need to start it probably around about up here. Sorry, guys, but like probably about there. Let's try it like that. All right, so we come up to here. We don't leave any space for this path. Does that matter? In fact, we could have orchards running like the whole length down here, couldn't we? Okay, new plan, because that would be really cool. After getting the placement wrong quite a lot, uh, I don't know how I'm going to edit this, so I'll probably cut bits out. Uh, so if it feels a bit jumpy, apologies for that. But I think starting just here is going to be good, because this runs off like this way. You see the orchards here are going to run down like this, and we can have quite a big one then right next to our path. So I'm going to go like that, and let's see. We can come... Hold on. Oh, if we come this way like this, and let's do it maybe... Maybe that big then for now, just like that. Let's do that. So how do we make these? Okay, we need to hoe them just like we do in normal fields. As I say, I'm not. this is all new to me, so I'm going to figure this out. Let's go grab a hoe. Oh, actually, we have some uh, things here. So some status problems. So the excavation shed uh, needs a pickaxe, for example. So let's sort that one out. And let's see, is there any other issues here around? Okay, sewing hunt smithy just need resources. Right, let me get all that sorted out so the town's actually being productive. And then we'll hoe up the orchard and we'll watch its development from there. I have now hoed up the area for the orchards, and it's an interesting look to it, because as you can see here, we just have these sort of uh, gaps in between, unlike the other fields that we've done. If we look at this now, it says as well, unsown, it just needs the uh, bag and the seed. So we're gonna go and buy some seeds that we can plant in the orchard. And actually, before we do that, we should definitely check. I might have some that we can already plant, um, but it looks like you don't need to put fertilizer on or at least you don't need to put fertilizer on first. So it might be a case of like we plant the seed and then it needs to be fertilized. Perhaps it's a little different. So let's grab out a bag. We can spare that with the 25 that we have here. And let's see, what would the uh, stuff be on us? These are all our seeds and stuff here. Let's see what we've got. Okay, we have two of the hot plant seeds. They can be planted in orchards, it says there. So that's one option. And looking through this, in fact, our only option. So what I think I'll do is head into town and find the guy we can buy from and just see all of the different options that we have available to us and then make a decision from there. I don't know what I want to go for, whether we're going to look to get uh, use these orchards for like food, for example, or whether we just want to try and make something that's going to sell for quite a lot at this stage. But let's go see what our options are first, and then we can make a decision from there. Um, actually, as well, I should probably check, and I realize I don't need to get off the horse to do that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, when we get to the vendor and we look to buy these seeds, we need to be aware of the season, because with the other farming, of course, it is seasonal dependent. Uh, so we need to check that. As it's going to be my first time growing stuff at the orchard, I decided to go for a bit of a different approach here. So we're going to buy an apple tree sapling. That's good. We're going to buy a cherry. Let's keep going down and see what else is actually available to us. But you guys might be getting the point. Now, we already have the hop one, so we're not going to worry about that for a second. Uh, we're going to buy the pear sapling. That's great. We're going to buy the plum sapling as well. Instantly, I had a quick look through. They all seem to say they can be grown at any stage throughout the year. So um, I think that we're, we're okay, actually. We don't need to worry about, like, with seeds like poppy seeds here, you know, you can only grow them at certain times a year. I think the orchard just, it just works the whole time. Um, okay, so that's all of them. Now, I don't know. Uh, I think what we'll do, longer term, I think hops are going to be the way to go. So I've got probably, let's just buy them all. Shall we? 300 coins? Yeah, why not? We're baller. Oh, my goodness, his face was right there. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we're going to just plant them all for now. And then with whatever spare ones we've got left, we'll plant the hops. Just because it's a bit more fun uh, to do it all, with, and especially for my first time doing it. And then once we get the yield from them, we can just compare, you know, what we get for each of them. And also, because I'm making content on this and you guys are watching, and some of you might not have done this before or might be curious about this, it's kind of better for the content, I think, if I make all the different types. Then you guys can see for yourselves as well and maybe plan accordingly for your own farms. So anyway, let's head back there now and get them planted. And uh, I'm guessing they'll take quite a, while, a long time to grow, so I might not be able to harvest this uh, episode but obviously we'll do that when we can. Right, so if we go ahead and equip our bag, and now we just right click here and we're looking for orchards, here we go. So we're gonna start here with a hop seed and we're gonna just throw that down in here. 
There we go. Oh, look at that. That's so cool. It has the little sticks and things. Oh, I love that. That's so good. I think when these are fully grown as well, they're going to make great decorational points at different places throughout the town. Okay, that's very cool. Uh, so that was the hops. Now we're going to do an apple tree right here. Now, do they all look the same when they're in the ground? Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, wow. So you have like a little apple tree. I wonder what that looks like when it grows. Um, probably like an apple tree, but you know what I mean. I wonder exactly what it looks like. So we're going to put the uh, pear tree there. Really should have got two of those. Uh, otherwise, is it even a pear? Ha, ha, ha. Uh, then we'll put down the plum in here. And uh, yep, that's good. And finally, wait, so we've done... Oh, no, wait, cherry tree. Cherry tree, there we go. So the cherry tree goes down here. And the rest of this farm is going to be hops. And I think we might have enough because we've got two extra that are in my storage right now that I didn't uh, pick up. But yeah, this is actually really fun. It's going to be really awesome to see how these grow. And actually, it's kind of cool because this is the last day of the season. So what we'll do when we sleep, we'll come back and have a look at these. And the season will, of course, have passed. And we'll see, you know, is there any growth there or does it just stay like this until it's fully grown? Okay, we're actually going to be a little bit short here. I went and got my final two. Uh, so we are going to be two orchards short. What I think I'll do, though, is I'll head back into town a second off camera and just buy two other saplings to chuck in here. Not sure what yet, but just something so that we get the full output. And then we'll see how that goes. But it's going to be exciting to see how this goes for sure. And uh, over time, we might look to do uh, something like where we make a proper area for this, because at the moment, they're just, uh, you know, like where we've got the proper farm area here. But for now, I think we'll just worry about these ourselves. Now, let's see, if we look at these right here, if we open up the management and we go into our fields, uh, we do now have orchards. And if you click on that, okay, so they're all grown. Uh, wait, oh, there's a load of areas we didn't grub up. Oh, my goodness, I missed a load. Okay. And it doesn't say anything about fertilization, even though we didn't do any fertilization. So that's kind of odd. Okay, so what did I, where did I miss them? Oh, I missed like a whole row here. How on earth did I manage this? So this whole area here hasn't been grubbed up. And okay, now it's an orchard because the sticks have gone. Okay, my bad. So now when we go into the field, we should be fully done. Um, and these two don't have anything planted on them. So we basically need five more crops when we go into town later, as you can see. And perhaps we have to add fertilizer next season. In fact, let's hurry up and I'm going to get into town right now and then come back and do other things after that because I don't want the uh, shop to close before the season ends. Otherwise, that'd be bad news for our plant growth. And I'm just noticing we have an absolute ton of clay here. You can see we've got like coming on for 900 clay. So what I think I want to do is just make a little change here under the extraction build of the excavation shed and basically tell them in terms of clay, let's drop that way down to like 1% a day on that. And I'm actually going to put them on working a bit of straw because we could do with a bit more straw because that's going to be used for um, the insulation stuff. Now, on top of that, we actually have a decent amount of limestone as well, I believe, if I can find that. But we want to keep that like building up because it's something that we're going to use over time. But what I want to see is, are there any stone buildings here that need their insulation upgraded? So let's go to add insulation and let's see. It looks like a lot of stone ones are actually done. So it's just going to be the clay and straw that we need to turn into the daub, which actually, I think I have some daub on me. Do I have some daub? I do, I've got 12. So I might do a little bit of insulating uh, just to see out the rest of this day. As soon as we can sleep, though, it's pretty exciting. We've got a few things to check in the new season. We want to see how our orchards are doing, of course, because we just planted those. And also, I want to see if either my pigs or my horses, or even donkeys for that matter, actually breed. So uh, we'll check all that out as soon as it's the new season. Okay, new season, guys. Let's go. Now, I could obviously just look. Oh, I already saw something. I was going to say I could look at my animals on the management screen to see if we have any babies. But where is the fun in that? However, there is some fun in this. Look at this, guys. Our orchards have indeed grown. And as if by magic, the wooden poles and even these little rope things here that are holding them all together, they have grown too. <laughs> so, yeah, it's coming along. I mean, none of it's ready for harvest yet, I don't think. But it is growing, which is very, very cool. And if we go into our field management right here, let's have a look at the orchard. Let's see. So plants grow. Nothing is ready for harvest yet. Maybe it takes like a couple of seasons to do that. Uh, we'll see. But yeah, that's pretty cool. Looking really good. Okay, now let's have some fun. Can we spot any piglets when we go into this little fence, uh, in this little piglet hut, pig hut, whatever? No, just two dirty, lazy pigs who don't do any breeding. <laughs> Story of our game. However, are we going to find any babies over here? Let's see. We're looking at the donkeys. No, they are just enjoying sleeping. Again. You know what? Actually, Claude. Oh, sorry to wake you up. Um, I'm going to take my saddle back off you um because i can sell it for so much money no actually not the reason why he's been put up to start i think he deserves to no longer have a saddle around him right just let him be a free donkey to run around there that's uh that is gonna be nice for him now what about over here are there any babies doesn't look like i can see any just looks like the two adults let's run through this side 
check in the window. <laughs> it could be in the final thing. I think not. I think we got lucky to get a horse bred in like our first season, um, but nothing else is going on for now. Of course, we got this dude just over here, but he's not going to be breeding or anything. He's just uh, on his own. Okay, well, all good. Uh, worth checking anyway. It's nice to see the orchards coming along, though, because that was one thing I really wanted to get done in today's episode. I always get excited when I get close to unlocking a new building. And if we open up our technology screen here under farming, scroll down a little bit, you can see there that we're getting pretty close here to unlocking the fold. Now, this would be nice to unlock because it's a new building anyway, but as you can see, it says about workers employed here will provide buckets of milk and wool. These are two things we don't have yet in our game, unless, of course, we bought them, but we're not producing them, is what I mean. And also, uh, that means sheep and goats, right? Two different animals that we can store in the one type of building. So that's great. Now, what I want to do is make it some animal feed. So we want to take that one right there. We're also going to need, let's see, oat grain right here, which, yes, we have quite a lot of that. Let's grab a few hundred of that. Do we have the rye grain? That's the only thing. We've only got 11, so we have to process the rye. That's fine. And then we're going to need straw as well in order to do that. Now, I'm doing this for a couple of reasons. Oh, wow. We're really low on straw. There's 19 straw. Okay. Uh, we might need to start collecting some of that then and maybe start producing a bit more of that in the future. So the making up of the animal grain uh, is obviously we need a sort of animal feed. You can see in the top right of the screen, we need to do that anyway, right? Because there's 10 animals that are hungry, but also it's going to give us farming points. And I'm hoping it's going to be enough to just tip us over the edge. But let's find that out together. So let's see how much animal grain we can actually make. Um, so we can make up, we speak, uh, sorry, animal feed, I don't want to keep calling it grain. We can make up 64, that's pretty good. Uh, you know, I was a little worried about the number of straw, but uh, obviously it's not used too much in the recipe. So with all that done, oh, there we go, new level for farming. And if I open this up right now, we should see then that the uh, fold is unlocked. We oh, we're 2490.9. We got a new level in terms of like a new skill to spend. Okay, I see. Uh, whoa, is there anything we want to do here? As we're doing orchards, I'm going to do this one, the skilled orchardman, because we get 10% more crops then from the orchard. That seems like it's uh, pretty good and pretty fitting, of course, for this episode, so uh, we'll do that one. Now, in terms of the animals that need feeding, let's double check that. So it is the geese, okay, no worries. We should go over to the goose house then and feed them. They don't actually take too much. Then we're just going to find a couple other little farming things that we can do in order to just get that final amount. Actually, just out of interest, so what are we at here? Two hundred, sorry, two thousand four hundred ninety point nine. If I feed the geese, does that go up or not? Uh, I don't know if like feeding them actually counts as like some sort of farming. Two thousand? No, it doesn't. Okay, I, I kind of didn't expect it to. However, one thing that might is like if we collect from their nest, which actually needs to be done anyway. Um, that's not where I want to be. This is where I want to be. Did that go up? Yes, it did. Right. We're going to collect all the stuff now from the geese nests and also from the hens nest. And I'm guessing in that case then that collecting uh, manure from animals will probably also make it go up too. Uh, so we'll check all that out and, and let's see if we can get above the uh, required amount here. And there we go, guys. After a few more nests over in the chicken hut, we did manage to unlock the fold. So let's have a little look at this new building that we can actually make then. Uh, there it is, the fold. Oh, it's quite a little one. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Uh, it's not going to take up much space. Not that I am going to place it down here, of course, but uh, just uh, interesting that it's, it's not too big. Uh, so yeah, let's actually, you know, let's go over to the farming area and find a proper spot for this. But uh, I'm pretty excited to have this one. Now, so far, we've got all the animals over on this side of the road with the horses and donkeys there, and we have the pigs over here. So I think it might be nice now to build something over this side uh, where we've got some animals too. So let's have a look at the fold once again. Animal husbandry there, fold. Now, we may want to make two of these eventually. So we've got one for the goats and one for the sheep. And if we do, I think we could have them back to back and then they can be all fenced in and stuff. So what I think I'll do is the first one can go on this corner here. I think that's going to be quite nice. So let's place it I'm just roughly like there. And now if we ever want to build a second one, let's just see if we go to the fold. Can we get a second one around the back here somewhere? Yes, we can. Just about actually because that tree's close, but we can just about, so that's fine. What I'll do now, as I do with all new buildings on the series, we're going to do a time lapse of this build and then we'll explore it and get it set up. And there it is, guys. The fold has been built, and uh, it's a reasonably nice-looking building, to be fair. I think, uh, you know, does what you'd expect, I suppose. It looks, looks how you would think. The thing we want to do now is start to build some fence around this, and I already know what fence I want to go for, which is this one right here, the crossbuck fence. Uh, we haven't used it yet for any of the other enclosures, and we do want to keep things nice and fresh. But also, I think that uh, it does look nice for, for sheep and, and goats. Now, the question is, how do we want to do this fence? We're going to have another fold backing onto this later on. 
So what's the best way of doing this? I guess to go from the back of the fold is going to be the best then, and we'll do that for the same for, for each of them. Uh, or they could share a fence. If we put the fence down through here, that actually could work, couldn't it? Because then they could, yeah, okay, so that, that'll be a better, better way of doing it. So getting this right is going to be a little tricky. I'll leave a bit of space so there's some grass between the fence and the, uh, the, the gravel path, and about there, I think. Yeah, that's going to be cool. All right, cool. Yeah, uh, so that, that's just how I like to do it. Personal preference right there. Now, when we're coming out this way, we want to come in between those trees. So kind of like there-ish near that rock. Let's get that nice and straight. I think like that's going to be great. Then we'll come over here. And I am going to come all the way up to the, the edge here. I think this is going to be quite a big enclosure for the sheep and the goats. Uh, so we'll come down to like there-ish. We have a lot of logs, but that's okay. Then this can come down to the corner here which isn't necessarily going to be perfectly straight, but if we actually do it more straight, yeah, I'm going to do that, and we'll put some decorational stuff on this corner later. And then finally, we just come right back to under here and connect up to where we started, which is there, but we just need to get this right. Yeah, like that. Okay, get as close as I can and place that down. Very good. Uh, so let's go ahead now. I'll, uh, I'll do this off camera, but I'm going to build up this fence. I'll do this first one here on camera. That's what it's going to look like when it's done, and I think that's actually going to be awesome once it's all done. This is a very big enclosure though, isn't it? Very, very big. Probably bigger than it needs to be. And I think what we'll do then is we'll put the sheep in here and then the goats that we put back here will have a smaller one because I don't want two of that size. So just planning ahead there. But it looks lovely though with the waterfall in the background. Really nice little spot for it there. There's the fold, guys. It is all fenced in, as you can see. And I do think this fence looks really, really nice. We've got the contrast now between the fence that we have here and the one that we have over here, of course. And then obviously, you know, further down there, there's even different things again. So it's looking pretty good. And I just think it's a really nice like setting as you come down into the town. You've got the farms right here, which are going to be on the outskirts of the town. If I open up the map right now, see where we're at. So you've got farming along the river right here and animals and things. And then going up here. And then the main town will just be like around this section here. Because I think later on, this right here, which is currently the orchards, will probably move that and maybe one or two other things as well. Uh, but yeah, it's looking pretty cool. So as I said, what I'd like to do is get sheep into this one, and uh, I think that's the best way of doing that. So what we're going to do is we need to find one of our villagers. Now I can press down Alt to find a villager. There's Bronisad, he's kneeling down. Oh, he's picking up cabbages. Uh, at least that's, I hope, what he's, what he's doing. Uh, so where can I find farm animals, sheep? Oh, hold on, sheep. Uh, Ostoya, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, to Ostoya we go. We're going to look to buy a couple of sheep and get them in there. So let's get out of this fence and then give a shout to our horse. And uh, where is he? There he is over there. I love that he just turns up in all these random places. Um, there we go. And Ostoya is pretty close to us, which is why I was kind of excited about that. Because it's uh, it's a lot better than if we have to go to like Klonika, for example. We're not too good there. Great location for these three towns where we live right here. Not so good for Klonika. So uh haven't had to go there too much just yet, but now that I've said that, I've no doubt jinxed myself and we'll have to go there a lot. Anyway, I'll see you guys in Ostoya. Let's go buy some sheep. I'm here in Ostoya, and it looks like the sheep are just roaming around. Like, if I go up to you, I can indeed buy them, and I didn't factor in how much they're going to be. A thousand each. We only have 1,300. I am a total muppet. Uh, how much are the babies, though? Only 260. We could buy lambs and wait for them to grow up. That's an, that's an interesting idea. Um, we've got a ram there. There's 1,092. Is that just the same as the adult? Yeah, see, the, the only thing is, though, if we do find a way to get that extra money and then buy them, once they start to breed, it is probably better in the long term that we do that. Right now, we're in summer, so we've got autumn, and then, yeah, we'd have autumn, winter, then spring. I'm just thinking for the taxes, what do I do here? Hmm, this is a tough one, actually, guys. Okay, the decision I've made is that I'm going to buy babies, so we're going to get one female, so it's by you, put you into the fold, and put you in that slot and we need to buy a baby male as well, then when they grow up, they can breed. So it's not ideal, but I think it's the sensible way for us to be at the moment because we just don't really have uh, enough, you know, of enough money is what I was trying to say. We don't really have enough money to do that. Now, interestingly, I was just noticing there, if we go over to the fold, which will be an animal husbandry, of course, then we have a ton of slots here. So when they do start breeding, my goodness, that's going to be really good for us. We can have loads of sheep and, uh, and sell them and make a lot of money. But here in Astoria, they just seem to be free-range sheep, which, uh, you know, that's fair enough, I suppose, if that's how they want to do it. We have fenced ours in, though, which I don't think is bad either. So here we go, guys. We've got the couple of lambs right here. Um, there we go. Lamb female and lamb male. Now, uh, we do need to feed them. I've got 35 animal feed on me, so let's chuck that in there. That gets them to 70%, which actually is pretty good. There's only two little lambs here right now, so we should be okay for a while. And obviously, once they grow up and start breeding, this is going to be quite profitable. 
And given the number of slots that we've got for the uh, lambs and the sheep and stuff that are going to be in this enclosure, it's actually not too bad now that we've made it this big. In fact, in the future, we may even need to make it bigger. We could expand up that way uh, if we wanted to. But yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Now, once again, uh, if we do get any Super Chats and you would like to name a lamb with that Super Chat, then please feel free to do so. Um, also, if you're a channel member uh, and you want to suggest names, please go for that as well. Apologies that I need to do it that way, but we get so many people watching, so many comments and stuff. It seems like a fair thing to do. Just if people are like donating and stuff, their, their hard-earned cash, just another little you know thank you to them uh, with, with that. So hopefully you guys are all good on that. Um, just, just like a little added bonus for them, I thought. Today was the final video that will be made and published and stuff whilst I'm in Hong Kong. So I believe, let me just check my dates here, Friday the 12th, I think this video is going to be published. And in which case, I've got what I just said right, and I'll be back soon to making the content, uh, you know, a bit longer and stuff potentially. I was also thinking I might do a live stream of this because I think we're getting to a stage now where we could do like a ton of building and it'd be a good thing to do in a live stream. Uh, there's a couple reasons for that. If we go over to our building... Uh, down here, the next thing to unlock is the mine. And we're now at like 3,500. We've got to get another 1,500 though. Bear in mind, like the entire game up to this point, everything we've built and done and whatever has got us to th only 3,500. And we need to get like almost 50% of that again to get to the mine. But if we could get there, I mean, it unlocks all of this stuff as well, uh, all these schemes we could have with it and build around it to have it just looking really, really nice. I'm really tempted to, to do that on a live stream. Now, what I want to know is, would you guys like to see that? Um, obviously, depending on what time the stream is, you won't all necessarily be able to make it, but you would be able to see, you know, let's say two, three hours, however long I stream for, of uninterrupted gameplay that I would publish on my channel afterwards. So if that is of interest to you, please let me know down in the comments. Another reason I'm thinking of that is that I'm back from Hong Kong on the 12th, but very late in the evening. So the 13th will be the Saturday. That's the next day I'm back to work. And then let's see, on the 18th, only five days later, I'm going away to Margaret River for five days, uh, which is quite a long time. So again, I'm going to try doubling up content each day and making that stuff. But a live stream might help me out with that too, I was thinking. So yeah, let me know your thoughts. Um, I, I don't always jet set like this. January is just a crazy busy month for me. <laughs> anyway, I've probably spoken about this for long enough. If you want to chat more about it, then uh, come to my Discord and we'll talk there. But for now, guys, thank you so much for watching. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.